So hey, thanks for joining us. This is Ashley Applegate. We're joined by Caden Trent or KWI on the couch. Caden, thanks for coming in today. Appreciate that, hey, sir. Thank you for having me. So you've been out of school about two years. Yep. What made you choose KWI versus other schools? Because there's schools all over America. Well, the good thing about KWI to me was um, it taught you more than just welding, you know what I mean? You had to go and there was times where you hand bevel coupons, you learned how to use a torch, all that stuff. Because there's many times at work where you're not just going to be welding. Right. You know, if you go on a big wall job at a power plant, you're cutting out tube panels, you're, you're rigging them, you're putting them down the boiler, you know, whatever. But it's not all about welding. And they teach you a lot of that at KWI. And the welding, I mean, the welding's phenomenal there too. There's not many other places I can think of where you can go and after you get your main search done, you can learn how to weld chrome, ink and nail, copper nickel, duplex, super duplex, right. you know, the list goes on and on and on. There's a lot of places that just don't offer that kind of kind of thing, you know? So we got you prepared for the world. Um, you're a traveling welder now. You go from job to job, place to place. In the last two years, how many different th states do you think you've been in? I'd say roughly, um, it, it's getting close to 20 now. I think last year it was 11, and then all of this year, Man, it's been a lot. I like to do little emergency jobs, so I might okay. go somewhere for two weeks, and then I'll get a phone call, hey, go over here for two weeks, and then, hey, go over here for two weeks. All right. And it's just, you know, that's what I like doing. I like traveling. I like going all over the place and seeing new things and meeting new people. That's one of the coolest things I think there is about this little, you know, trade community, the industrial construction. You know, you get to meet a lot of characters you'd right. never, ever meet if you didn't do okay. this sort of thing. Tell us about your day as a traveling welder. Uh, you get to a new town, you find a nice hotel, or, or how do you like to roll uh, up? I like to, uh, I like to find an Airbnb before my welding partner bought his camper. Um, I think they're nice. You know, a lot of the time you got a, uh, you got, it's, well, for one, it's multiple rooms. You're not cramped up in some small right. little hotel all day. But uh, other than that, there's a lot of the time there's a washer and dryer, a real sink for you to wash dishes, Tupperware, uh -huh. you know, if you bring your uh, food in in a lunchbox, stuff like that. I think it's just a lot better of a deal. And most of the time, they're a little bit cheaper, too. Okay. Yeah, especially for maybe a, an extended stay. Yeah. You're going to be there for two or three weeks or, or a month or so. Tell us about the day in your life. How do, how do you start? What goes on? Well, uh, if you're showing up to the job for the first day, I like to get to the plant a little bit earlier than I normally would, about 45 minutes or so. So, you know, you wake up a little bit earlier. But that way, you know, if you have trouble finding which gate to go into, some of these big refineries you'll go to might have... 10, 15 gates. Okay. So you, uh, you know, you get there a little bit earlier, try and find the gate, and then uh, a lot of times you'll badge in. And depending on what plant you go to, so some of these refineries they'll have to bust you in to where you're working because you know there might be 10 units in the in the plant. Well, you have a little daily safety meeting, and after that you'll check your tools out, get up with your foreman. He'll tell you, you know, we got a weld up here on whatever this heater in the crew unit, whatever you got going on, and. Uh, most of the time, I'll just go with the flow after that, you know. I go up there and make that weld, help them make that fit, whatever. By the time I'm done, I usually get my foreman come back to line me out, what I need to do, what okay. I need to get going on. Other than that, just look for work, you know what I mean? If you ain't seen your foreman in a while, uh, just take initiative, jump in there and do something, you know what right. I mean? Because it, it just looks good on you, you know. It, it, you'd hate to be sitting there while your fitter's struggling to make a fit, scrolling around on Instagram, right. you know. Just, just take initiative and work. But uh, after that, man, usually uh, you'll do a little, uh, we'll get together at the end of the day after you're done working and talk about what happened, a little progress report. You know, most of the time everybody did good or hey, y'all need to step it up or hey, y'all killing it, whatever. They'll bust you back out of the plant. Uh, get to go back to your Airbnb, you know, take a hot shower, eat a little bit of food and usually just get ready for the next day. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so when you're getting bust into these plants, um, Basically, you're going in with just you, or are you packing a bag of tools and stuff with you, or uh, what? Well, most of the time, I'll unload my job box on the first day. You know, they'll take a forklift out to the gate and get your job box. So, uh, most of the time, you know, unless it's a real short job, like two or three days, I won't bring my job box in. I'll carry a backpack with all my stuff in it. But if it's a longer stay job, I'll just have myself and my lunch box coming in every day. That's about it. Okay, so packing a lunch, there's no time to, to go out and hit McDonald's no, during the day? No, you might have 30 minutes and you got to think if that bus ride's 10 minutes into the plant, that's 10 minutes in right. and out, you got 10 minutes to go get food. And that ain't enough time to eat, get it, come back in, all that. So I'd say it's best. And it saves a lot of money too, packing your own lunch. Right. Yeah, that may be a little advantage too on either a camper or the Airbnb because you can cook some food, food at home. You got a stove, yep. Right, yep. right. So you're doing all this traveling, is it, 
is it all work and no play or tell us about oh, that? Oh, no, you got all kinds of time. You know, everybody thinks, you know, you work 84 hours a week, 7, 12. Is what time do you have to do anything else? While you're working, you know, you, you've still got time to go. I know guys that wake up at 3.30 in the morning, go hit the gym, and then after work, they'll stop by, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings and have a meal with us or whatever. Right. And other than that, I mean, once you, you know, you finally do catch your layoff, you can go back home, say you're on a 60 day outage working 84 hours a week, you can go back home for two or three weeks and not hit a lick at nothing, just hang right. out with the family and there. have a good time, you know, rest up a little bit and get ready for the next job out. Have you ever been with a company that, you know, give you a couple of days off to, for some R&R &R while you're out there? Uh, yeah, I've been with uh, some companies like that, you know, uh, a lot of places I went, uh, there are a lot of people I've noticed are going to 610s instead of 712s. Uh -huh. uh, I feel like not a lot more gets done on 712s anyways, you know, everybody's pretty tired. But even if you are on 712s, a lot of times they'll do like 13 and 1. So you'll work the first week straight, then work six days the second week, and they'll give you a day off for laundry, cook food, get, you know, get stuff ready or whatever. So describe maybe one of the places that some sites that you got to see while you're out here traveling America. Uh, one of my first big jobs was out in uh, Artesia, New Mexico, uh, right above Carlsbad. as a little refinery out there we did an expansion on. And uh, I think it was Labor Day when we were there. It might have been another holiday, but whatever it was, they had given us the weekend off. And me and my welding partner actually decided we're just going to go to El Paso. We're okay. going to see what's around here. So we drove about four or five hours down there and fooled around for a day. and then. Uh, well, we had another two, one or two days to do something. So he said, well, let's just uh, see what there's around here. And we got to look and there was a place called White Sands National Park. It was a really pretty place. I mean, the sand's white. I mean, just looks like you're out on the beach somewhere with a big mountain view in the background. So we went up there and looked around and it was a really neat place to go. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, whether they're young or in a different career or whatever, you know, they, they see these welders out here and you're, you're dirty, you're sweating, you're working hard and they think it is all work and no play. And they don't realize that, man, you're getting paid to see our beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the good things about it, you know what I mean? There's not many, especially if you go to KWI when you're like 18 or 19. Think of how many 18 or 19 or 20 or shoot, even people up into their 30s get to go travel across America. You know, there's not many times where somebody can just take a phone call and the person on the other end say, hey, you want to go to uh, Savannah, Georgia tomorrow on an emergency job? It's going to be three or four days. You get down there, you work three or four days, you can buy the hotel out for another two, three days and stay down there and sightsee and do this. Or even while you know you're off, because you're not going to be at work 24 hours a day. You might work a 10 hour shift and then get back to your hotel and decide, you know, there's a, a you know, a, a park or there's a, you know, whatever this, a restaurant I really want to go yeah. to. You get to go and do stuff like that. Yeah. Do you learn a lot from the foreman and the different people? Uh, you said earlier that that you've met a lot of unique people. Tell us about one of those folks that, that you've met and how they've helped you. Oh, uh, well, one of, the, one of the best people I ever met in my life, uh, he was on one of my first big pipe jobs like I was talking about out in New Mexico. Um, I really didn't know how to weld stainless that well. And uh, I told him, I just, I just came up and I told him, I said, I want to get better at this, you know what I mean? I, you know, a little piece of uh, two inch or something like that, I can get around it pretty easy, but when we're welding this big 12 inch stainless, you know, the way I keyhole and dab it, it, it's just really giving me a fit. And you know, where most people would step in and say, oh, you know, I ain't got time or, or go watch YouTube or something. He sat there and helped me, man. He probably watched me make four or five welds before he even picked up his torch, just trying to, you know, ease me into that, into something I had never done before. Right. His name was Vernon. He's a, uh, I'm really appreciative of him. You know what I mean? That really gave me my start in welding uh, more exotic alloys and stuff. Yeah, you, you can never be too good to learn or too old to learn anything like that. Uh, and a lot of these seasoned veterans, like, like you talked about, uh, can step up and show you, but you just got to ask for that help. That's, that's one thing is just swallowing your pride. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't be too prideful to ask somebody for help. Even, even if you think they're younger than you or, or you think you're better than them, you know, at the end of the day, you, you might be more knowledgeable than they are, but they might know one or two things that you just don't know. Right. You know, when you ask them, they might tell you something and it could change your whole perspective on something. You know what I mean? You just, you just can't be too prideful to ask, you know, I, I try and ask everybody questions and, and uh, I might, you know, listen, you just got to know what to filter through, you right. know, you, you ask everybody and this or that or how do you put that root in or or how do you keep it from doing this or i've seen you do this why do you do it and they tell you and it might just open you up and you try it and you like it better than what you've been doing make it faster make your well look better whatever mm -hmm. that may be 
if you hit a longer job, so let's say that, you know, you, you go into a job and they say it's a week outage and you're planning on, you know, getting back home for whatever and all of a sudden that, that week turns into to two weeks or even two months. How do you not get bogged down in the grind when you're out there for, for a two month job and you weren't expecting it? Uh, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, this is gonna sound cheesy, but I really enjoy what I do. I mean, when I go into like a power plant or something like that, and they have a, a row of, you know, a, a five tubes on a panel lined out for me to weld, we get it all fit up and ready to go, and I put tacks in it. When I get there and I turn my music on and I start welding, I really just, I really enjoy what I do. Right. Like, it, it's a little obsessive, it's a little crazy, but when I start doing it, you know what I mean? I just really, I really like it. And that, yeah. every day of doing that, it just, you know, I, I don't think I could ever get tired of it. Eventually, I would like to progress my career up to foreman, super, GF, whatever that may be. But as of right now, you know, I really enjoy what I do. You know, they say if, if you find something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That's how I feel about it. I, I really don't think if it is work, I get to go in and have fun. You know, it's like I said, it, it sounds weird and obsessive, but I, I constantly want to get better. You know what I mean? Everybody. I want everybody to know, you know, that weld might stay there for a while and somebody walk by it and go, hey, you know, whoever did that knows what they're doing. They mm -hmm. might not know it's me, but in my heart, I know that I put that cap on there. I put that bead in there and it looks daggone good. Somebody, you know, will see it. So it's pride in your work. Yeah, that's that's what a lot of it is. There ain't no point in, in not doing something to the best of your ability. Right. You don't have to, you do not have to be the best welder in the world to weld something to the best of your ability. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. Even even if you're not the best at it, take pride in it. If you mess something up, cut it out, fix it. Don't just leave it. Don't say, "Hey, that'll be all right. That'll be fine. I'm gonna. I'll worry about it later." No, just go ahead and fix it. That's just taking pride in your work. You know, it's and it's making you better. If you fix enough mistakes, you'll stop making those mistakes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it does. You you learn from your own mistakes too. Yep. Uh, you know, you mentioned your your one fellow there that you learned some stuff from, and he kind of started getting you around some of the some of the bigger pipe. What about something that maybe is a, a a story that you can tell us that helped you along the way that that might help the next young man or the young woman listening? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay. You know what I mean? If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to do something, tell your foreman. Don't say, "Hey, I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to do it." What you should do is walk up and say, "Hey, you know, I'll do anything you want me to do." but I, I really don't know how to do this. If you'll teach me how to do it, I'll get up on it every time. But for right now, you know, maybe send somebody with me, let me watch them, let me help them. Because you can get in there in some of these bigger plants, or, or not even, they don't even be bigger plants. You can just get in there and really mess some stuff up if you don't know what you're doing and don't know what you're looking for. Um, you know, I've seen guys try to cut out tube panels and, and, and gash into tubes, you know, on a, on a new panel, shaving down the membrane on the sides and stuff. And, and right there, you know, you'll either have to put a Dutchman in or put a pad weld on a brand new, you know, right. big tube panel. And that, that could be a problem. So really just ask questions, especially when you're when you're first breaking out and younger, because there is some stuff that you're just not going to know. But you just got to watch somebody. Just just speak up and say, hey, you know, I'll do it, but I don't know how to. If you teach me, I'll do it every time. Right, right. You know, that's, that's one of the more important things. Yeah, I think it is. And a lot of people, uh, they may have too much pride and, and they think, well, I don't, I don't want to ask because they don't want to look bad. But in reality, you ask that question and, and there's some old timers out here that are going to step up to the plate and help you out a lot. Yeah, there's been times where I thought I knew, you know, exactly how I was going to get in there and do something. And, and, and there's been some guys say, you know, hey, you know, I don't, I don't mean to step on your toes, but if you do it like this, it go a lot better for you. Yeah. I've learned a lot of things from guys like that. And I try and help, you know, I don't know everything, but if I see somebody struggling, I'm going to walk by and say, hey, you know, buddy, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but if you did it this way, it'd be a lot better for you. Now, do you always work for the same company when you go out? No, I work for all kinds of different companies. Um, you know, you build connections all over the place, and uh, somebody might call my phone and say, hey, you know, I'm out here working for these folks. We need more welders. Uh, you want to come down here for, you know, whatever, 30 days, two weeks, whatever the outage may be, and uh, I'll finish up that job, and either I want to go home for a week and and sit around or uh, I'll make some phone calls myself and and uh, call somebody, ask them who they're working for, or what the pay rate is, and you know if they need any more welders, and if they do, send me a supervisor's number or something, and I'll reach out to them and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. You know, I don't mind sticking for one company as long as they'll keep me busy. Right. You know, that, that doesn't bother me a bit to only work for one, one company. 
the way it is for me right now, I just, as soon as I take a phone call, I'll try not to wait around. If I'm ready to work and go out to work, mm -hmm. I don't want to wait two weeks, three weeks, whatever, on that one phone call. Because jobs get pushed back, delayed, right. sometimes even up and canceled. I've seen them cancel outages before. And if you're sitting around waiting on that one job to come by and you've been yeah. passing up on this call and this call, you could get yourself in a bind pretty fast. Yeah, you take a job, but hey, maybe it ain't the, you know, the, the glamorous money you're looking for, but at least you're putting some money in your pocket until another job opens up instead that, of waiting on that. That's a, yeah, that's a big thing is, uh, is just you might not be making the most money, but at least you're making some money. You know what I mean? If you're sitting at the house watching Netflix all day, that's, that's probably less than what yeah. you're making on this job out here, you know. So in between jobs, you're, you're back home. Um, what do you do to sort of unwind when you're at home? Do you like to just chill out and watch movies? You ride four-wheelers, go hunting? What, what's that for you? A lot of the time, I just chill out at the house. You know, like you said, watch movies, do that sort of thing, just get ready for the next job. Because, you know, when you're out there working, you've got time to do some things, but uh, you can't just sit down and watch three or four movies in one day. And, right. You know, that's just not going to happen where you've got work and you you got to fix your food, do this or that or the other. You've got downtime, but you don't have the whole day to do something like that. Right. Now I can just kick back and relax most of the time before I have to go back out again. Well, Caden, we appreciate you coming in today. I appreciate uh, you having me. Right. You've been listening to KWI on the couch with Ashley and Caden.